Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you guys the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO throughout this last week. And I gotta say, I don't know what it is. Maybe, well, a lot of people are spending more time at home. I think a lot of people are spending a little bit extra time building in LEGO because there are some amazing custom creations here. I'm only gonna talk about 10. There are probably 30, 40, maybe 50 linked in the video below. And if you like anything you see here, guaranteed you're gonna like some of the random mystery links that are in the description below. So I highly recommend you check those out too if you have any time after watching this. Also, our web store is linked in the description below if you wanna build any amazing custom creations on your own that are a little bit more detailed, a little bit more difficult, some say, but you definitely get uh, some extra detail here that you wouldn't normally be able to get from a regular Lego playset. Let's jump right into the very first build. Remember, none of these are in any order from my favorite to least favorite. Just 10 builds I like, and this first one is Wallace and Grummet RC Motorcycle with Sidecar, and there's also Sean the Sheep. The designer is Grubbaluck, and I think this build has got basically everything I want in a model. First off, the Lego built characters are extremely well done. They're very recognizable, not an easy thing to pull off in Lego. The eyes work perfectly here, those Mixel eyes. And even Grummet has little snake pieces used to show the flaps on his little uh, biker cap are flapping in the wind. On top of that, this is an RC motorcycle. The designer created a video, but the motorcycle itself can turn along with Wallace's head and the whole thing rides around pretty quick. I don't normally say I have a favorite in an episode. This one might actually be my favorite. And if you haven't seen any of the original Wallace and Grummet claymation movies, Movies, I highly recommend that you do so. Then from the designer intert, we have monochrome Petra. So the monochrome is of course the all tan, which actually kind of just makes sense. This is a wonderful micro scale design. I like that the Technic pins and gear pieces have been used uh, just in conjunction with a lot of the Lego system pieces to work well for all the different bits of detailing. In a lot of ways, this works as kind of a micro architecture design, but it is just indeed ruins. But let's move straight on towards a midi size version of the Black Pearl by Ben Benjamin Stenland. This is a wonderful combination of sloped bricks making up the sides of the hull. I like the piece of that quarter round that makes up the front. I'm not sure, but these cape pieces might be soft cloth Batman capes or maybe something even from a larger brick built fig. It is sort of hard to tell at this size. And the string work actually looks very good. It kind of reminds me of maybe some of the original pirate ship sets where you just have some long string pieces used to uh, create the much more complex and intricate set of knots and ropes. And in case you're wondering, there's actually a lot of monochrome builds from this last week. A few are in this episode, but I highly recommend you check out those links in the description below. You could probably find a rainbow. Another Lego monochrome build is coming down the line though from Legonardo Davidi, and it is the Olympus OM-1. This isn't the first, second, third, or tenth time I've seen somebody doing a life-size recreation of a camera that they absolutely love. And what stuck out to me in a very interesting way is the fact that he decided to use tread pieces and tire pieces for the lens in the front. Also, you can see more tire pieces used for some of the knobs there at the top. And there are some wonderful details inlaid along the body everywhere. The use of those life raft pieces for the rings on the side is a nice touch. And that triangular bump in the front uh, works quite well to make that very unique shape of this older Olympus. Now this next build is something that has been making the rounds quite a bit this last week. From Crash Kramer, we have the Lego Eurofighter Typhoon. At this extremely large size, all of the intricate, fun, subtle little angles of this fighter are captured wonderfully in Lego bricks. Now there is something kind of special, there's something kind of unique about the people that make these extremely large, incredibly detailed fighters. There is what I think is a custom windscreen piece in the front. So for you purists out there, I hope you don't lose your heads too much. You'll also see that 
uh, the sticker detailing goes pretty far for a custom model like this. You can see even the seat on the inside has some strap pieces which are actually just cut bits of sticker. I don't recognize that cone in the front for the nose. That could be a custom mold. I'm not totally sure, but honestly, when you have a model that is so cool like this, even Lego purists like us here in the studio are definitely willing to uh, overlook a few little details that maybe we would not have personally chosen for a custom Lego build. So many fun details though. The shape of the wing in particular is done extremely well. And sometimes I feel like we like to think of ourselves as arbiters of accuracy when it comes to Lego building. But honestly, this guy's on another level. Excellent, excellent model. Now moving on to the next build, you might have to take a second look before uh, actually realizing that everything you see here is made from Lego bricks from the designer Dare Joe. This is the electric drill, but of course there's plenty of other tools here. And this is the exact kind of thing that would be really fun to leave on an actual workbench and see if you could confuse somebody. Even the pencil in the back is completely made of Lego bricks. And there's some wonderful subtle details here like the arrow piece in the front of the drill is making up that Phillips head. And the trans green round one by ones are a perfect little bubble piece. This is not the first time this particular designer has tackled builds like this, life size, extremely accurate creations. And they're always fun to take a closer look at. But now we are moving on to yet another monochrome build from the designer Duncan Lindbo. This is Monicoma. I believe that's the name of it. It reminds me of the final scene from Ghost in the Shell. Perhaps this is from another movie, but frankly, I, I don't. Don't even care. What we're looking at is just such a fun uh, bit of design work, both for the destroyed bit of concrete, and you've got the minifigure hiding behind what looks like cover that won't last for much longer, and this incredibly dynamic light bluish gray uh, six-legged insect-like huge robot with massive guns. I mean, it really does feel like something that you'd see straight from the 80s or uh, I would say maybe early 90s. And the design choices here are wonderful. I love those larger uh, armor pieces used for the knees. The giant mini guns are a bit cartoony, but very appropriate for this design. And the model just feels like it's got a lot of energy. And the monochrome also really allows you to focus on the different shapes and designs and the texture of this piece, as opposed to getting distracted by maybe some different color highlights. I think it looks excellent with just the gray. Now we're looking at a really fun pair of models. This is from Lego Wyrim, and the title is Savannah, I Am Your Father. Now this blue build the SL20 Streamliners from a designer Vince Talos and the HS Savannah Master in Red is really the custom build that is being showcased here but it totally works having both of these models together. It's kind of like the 1989 Batmobile meets the Jetsons or something along those lines. It's hard to even tell stylistically what this mashup really reminds me of but considering we have the word streamliner in the original title and those fins definitely match something like a 1940s, 1950s car, then I'd say that's a pretty good jumping off point. The shapes that we have here are just so much fun with all these large round bricks. They all match up in all the right places. The corners don't have any messy connections and the stylistic highlight lines that run down each of the bodies are just so much fun. You'll notice that the streamliner the blue one actually has wheels that can turn, which is interesting because there's two pairs in the front. And I'd be curious to know if that function exists for the red Savannah as well. In fact, actually it probably doesn't now that I can see uh, the wheel is exposed on the other side as well. Anyways, I wish there were more close-up detail pictures of these models. Everything here just looks so incredibly clean. Hey, I did mention monochrome. Now we've got dark bluish gray from the designer First Order Lego. This is the Hand of Destiny. The black background and low light setting here that we have for this photo uh, is almost just as much of the piece as the actual design itself. I appreciate that the build style for the hands is just a little bit bigger, a little bit rounder and smoother, differentiates itself from the heavily studded ground and the textured slope pieces that we have that make up the bark. And now because we're playing with monochrome or the designer's playing with dark bluish gray here, or maybe it's light bluish gray, it's kind of hard to tell with the lighting that we have here, but the ultimate uh, takeaway is look 
at the leaves. Look at the foliage of this tree. It is a series of clips and tons of little inner rim wheel pieces. I have seen headache design approaches before in the past, but I have not seen anything that looks as much of a pain in the butt as this. I've got no idea how something like this comes together on the inside. I feel like the easiest way to do it would be to just take a ball of clay and just stick all those clips in there. But even then, I don't think that would be good enough. It is just so densely packed. Because everything's in gray, it works perfectly as foliage. Obviously, you can't have gray leaf pieces in a color build but I really would love to see what an inner picture of this looks like because I have no doubt that there are legitimate Lego connections on the inside that really make this all work. All right, we are jumping into the very last build from Lego Nuts. The title is, Guys, Do You Want to Grab a Coffee Before Heading Home? This is fun. This is very much along the uh, my style or the, the stuff I really like from sci-fi builds. It's a bit cartoony, it's a little bit dark, but ultimately very, very familiar. We have a small floating deli. I like that the letters are lit up, and we've got Benny and Emmett grabbing a coffee, it looks like, before they head back home. The build is both clean, it's a little bit grungy, and it looks like this maybe could exist also within a Jetsons-style universe, but maybe in one of the less uh, nice neighborhoods. If you want to see incredible Lego builds that are composed wonderfully with light and uh, maybe a little bit of Photoshop, I highly recommend you check out Lego Nuts. Each photo definitely says more than a thousand words, and that is going to be it for this LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode. Remember, there are so many more linked in the description below if you wanted to check them out. If you have any extra time, I highly recommend that you do so. The creativity really has been ramping up, I feel like, in the last week or two. I can definitely tell people are having a lot of fun with their bricks. And if you enjoy this content, you can always like or subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time at Brickball. Yeah.